So I'm um, feeling a little bit downbeat this evening. Um, Creeps McPasta, very well-known, well-loved member of the narration community, uh, was broken into at the weekend, uh, lost a lot of stuff, all his electronic equipment, um, everything related to his channels, and a lot of personal mementos as well, which really sucks. I was broken into a, quite a while ago, had a lot of things stolen, including a lot of uh, photos and stuff. So I know how it feels, and it's really, really horrible. So, if you're thinking of breaking into someone's house ever and stealing stuff, please don't do it. It really is heartbreaking when it happens to you. So, a uh, special shout-out to Creeps McPasta. Going through a tough time. Doesn't even know if we'll be able to record videos in the near future. Uh, all the best, fella. Hope to see you back soon. Glad to see so many people in the community supporting you. Got a video for you tonight myself. Uh... You know what? Just listen. Let me know if you enjoy it, okay? Not really in the mood for introducing it properly this evening. Sorry, guys. Just feeling on a bit of a downer about this. You all take care out there, okay? Bad stuff happens to good people. We can't really avoid it. And I'm waffling on a little bit. So, sit back and relax, my dear friends, with your favorite drink. Peace out to each and every one of you. Hope you have a nice evening. I've got a little story that I hope will make you all feel a little bit better and get you through this horrible week. It's only Monday. Okay, sit down, relax, and listen. Three a.m. came like clockwork, and with it so did the screams. Louis woke up from a dream to hear a small, frightened voice shouting from across the house, Mommy! Daddy! The screams coming from Oliver's room persisted. Louis rolled over in bed, smacking his lips to rid the stale, cotton feel from his mouth. He rubbed sleep from his eyes as his wife Susan started to stir awake. Louis placed a hand on her back and said, oh, it's, it's my turn, babe. Don't get up. I got it. He swung his legs over the edge of the bed and let his feet dangle above the carpeted floor as he took a sip of water. The glass almost slipped from his hand when a new cry of panic came from his son. The sound personified dread. Putting the glass on the nightstand, Louis left his room and yelled, on my way, bud. Everything's okay. He hoped this would start to calm his little man's nerves before he could even show his tired face. The screams continued. Louis banged his hip on the long rectangular sofa table they kept in the hallway. The pain shooting up his right side brought him fully awake as he reached Oliver's bedroom door. A shiver ran up his arm as he grabbed the doorknob and turned it. A slow, soft creak started to reveal a paper-thin line of dim light, tracing the frame of the door. The soft light was coming from Oliver's nightlight. It seemed to create more shadows than it actually cast away. Oliver screamed for his mum again, and the scream was louder now that the door was not muffling his pleas. Mommy! Mommy! The closet! There's something in the closet! He yelled through gasps, trying to catch his breath. As Louis caught sight of Oliver's glossy, wet eyes, he swallowed a lump that had been growing in his throat. It's not mom, bud. Just good old dad. Everything is okay, Oliver. What has got you so upset, buddy? Louis said in a calm, parental tone. He could see in his son's eyes that his presence had Oliver calming down. The closet, daddy. The closet. There's something in my closet. <laughs> I think it's a monster, Daddy, stammered Oliver in a small voice. Now, Ollie, you know we checked under the bed and in the closet before bedtime, just like we do every night. We didn't find any monsters or spooky ghosts. We never find any monsters or spooky ghosts. Monsters don't exist. As he spoke, he watched Oliver continually glance back at the closet. 
Monsters are just make-believe for movies and books. You have a great imagination. I know you can imagine it, but it's not real. I know, Dad. I keep hearing the same metal hangers move around in there, and it scares me when it's quiet. Oliver said. Sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to wake you again. I just get so scared when I hear noises coming from there, and I know we already checked it. It's just scary in the dark, Dad. Louis sat next to Oliver on his bed and put an arm around his son. It's fine, son. I'm always here for you no matter what the time of day or night. No need to be sorry. I used to be afraid of the dark when I was your age, too. Really? Questioned Oliver with an excited curiosity. Yeah, it was pretty bad for a while. So I understand what being scared is all about. There for a time, I was sure there was a monster or something under my bed. Every night I would fight going to sleep when it was time. No matter how many times my dad, your grandpa, would check under the bed and find nothing but toys and dirty socks. But I just had it in my head that there was something there and I was scared. What did you do, Dad? Oliver asked like he was waiting for a secret to be revealed. Nothing. I kept being scared about the dark and the noises I would hear. And most of all, the monster I thought that was under my bed. Until, one day, I went to bed and realized that there was nothing to be scared of. Louis said this with a proud smile as he looked at his son. He had Oliver's full attention. I think the one thing that helped me not to be afraid anymore was the fact my dad never stopped checking under the bed for me. Even though he never found anything under there, he would always check for me. Anytime I would hear a noise that scared me, I would call for my dad, and he would come and check again. Oliver yawned big and stretched, getting comfortable again. Louis continued. As I got older and became a dad myself, I realized that they knew all along that there were no monsters or spooky ghosts under the bed, but they still checked. They checked just to put my mind at ease, so I would sleep and not be scared. Like you and mommy do? Oliver said, with heavy eyelids hanging low. Louis could tell that talk had calmed Oliver down, and he was about ready for bed again. Yes, sir. So, now that you need me, I will be there. I will always check the closet and under the bed for you. I'll check until the day you don't need me to check anymore. Oliver smiled up at Louis. Besides, you know Craddock would bark his head off if a leaf blew by the window. He would probably wake the whole neighborhood if someone or something was in the house, Louis said with a sarcastic grin. I know, Daddy. He's loud. The last word stretching long and wide as he yawned once more. Oliver laid his head on his SpongeBob pillow and pulled his sheets up to cover himself. Will he check the closet before you go back to bed? Oliver asked. Of course I will, but... Louis tucked the matching SpongeBob sheets under and around his seven-year-old's tall, lanky body and readied him for bed for the second time that night. Sliding down off the bed onto his right knee, he got on all fours to check under the bed. As he pulled back the bed skirt that hid the gap under the bed, all he saw was the ridiculous Hot Wheels collection Oliver had amassed over the past two years and a few mismatched socks. There's nothing under here but almost half of all the Hot Wheels cars in the known universe, Louis bragged, and Oliver chuckled. Louis's knees popped as he stood up and took a step backwards towards the closet. As he reached for the sliding door that opened the closet, he noticed it was open ever so slightly. This made him stop and think if that was how he left it after his first check. He couldn't recall exactly so he brushed the thought off as he slid the door open. The position of the dresser where the small lamp was sitting made it so little to no light actually made its way into the closet. The absence of light made the two-foot-deep inset seem to stretch on for an eternity. This tiny room within a room was wider than it was deep, giving it the illusion of another world. Maybe this was a world waiting with dark questions, a place with no answers. 
Louis's tired mind wandered down strange paths, and he pushed these thoughts aside. He'd been in the closet countless times. He'd rehung the hanger rod and patched up a large crack in the drywall the best he could. The crack never seemed to quite fill in. After he filled it several times, he was able to paint the wall and rehang the rod for Oliver's coats. Oliver had jumped from his top bunk and hung on the rod until it broke free and cracked the drywall. <laughs> Louis found him yelling for help under a pile of jackets and shirts. This was just the closet where Oliver kept his excess toys and board games. He couldn't imagine how Ollie could be thinking that there was something in this closet. There was no room in here for anything, let alone a monster. There were things on top of things. The space was a mess. Louis swung his hand through the hanging coats like he did every time he checked, rattling the hangers himself this time. The metal of the naked hangers tinged together and Oliver sat up with wide eyes. <sighs> it's, it's just the hangers, hangers, bud. A few of them don't have jackets on them, so they're swinging around while I check. Oliver said nothing. He just pulled the covers further up to his face. Only his eyes peeked out from above the sheets. Louis smirked as he steadied the swinging hangers and looked above them to the shelf. An odd silhouette caught his eye, and he did a double take to the left. A chill stole his breath as two eyes peered down. With his heart thudding in his chest, he focused his eyes in the dark and stared back. The little bit of lamplight that made its way into the closet gave a glow to the tiny, dime-sized black dots that stared down at him. He leaned in closer so that his eyes could adjust to the dark more. Now that he could see better, he realized he'd been in a heated staring contest with a fucking dead-eyed teddy bear. The tiny dead black oceans that were his eyes appeared to have a soulless depth. A depth that wanted to drown you in its endlessness. Now, the death stare was broken, and Louis resumed his pointless search. He felt a little childish himself for getting worked up by the bear, and he hoped that Oliver hadn't taken notice. All clear, buddy. Checked and double-checked, Louis exclaimed as he slid the door almost all the way shut. A fuzzy green slipper stopped it from closing completely. <sighs> okay, Daddy. Thank you for checking again. I love you. Oliver yawned and rolled over onto his side as Louis strode towards the dresser to turn off the lamp. The shrinking shadow of his outstretched arm gave the appearance of a snake getting smaller by the second. The pull string snapped his command, making the room five shades darker. Only the nightlight now shone from the corner of the small square space that was Oliver's room. The deep, rhythmic breathing of his son told Louis that he was well on his way back to Sleepy Town. Louis whispered goodnight to his dozing son. His whisper seemed still too loud for the quiet, early morning hours. He passed the threshold into the hallway and reached with his right hand to pull the door shut. Before he could pull it closed, he thought again about Oliver's episode and how he himself was when he was this age. Sympathizing with him, he left the door open part of the way. He let go of the tarnished bronze handle as quickly as he could and started to walk back to bed. Three steps from the door, a muted, metallic clanking stopped him in his tracks. He could hear the hands of the clock tick by as he waited in silence to hear the sound again. Again never came, but something compelled Louis to go back towards the room. Sometimes we don't know why we do the things we do. Louis leaned into the half-open door to pop his head through when he heard another sound. The muffled noise sounded like something of great mass shifting and burrowing out of somewhere. A shiver ran up Louis's spine when the clanking of hangers sounded again. 
The slithering, shifting sound was now a constant motion, like fabric being pulled, forcefully, through a hole that's too small. Heavy, measured breaths accompanied each step he took towards the sounds. They were coming from the closet. Louis glanced down at Oliver's bed when he noticed movement. The little boy rolled onto his side. He remained quiet so as to not wake his son again. The noises coming from the closet were the only sounds in the silent room. Louis's heart pounded in anticipation. He was starting to fear that his son's worries had infested his brain like nesting roaches. He shuddered to think about it. Each step he took made him more nervous. He wanted nothing more but to crawl back into bed with his sleeping wife. But the noise was real. It was happening. The confusion added to his unease because he'd already checked twice now. There was nothing there. Reaching forward with a slightly shaky hand, he grabbed the door and slid it back to the left and listened as the wheels whined on their track. The door opened fully as it hit the closet doorway with a thud. Oliver's eyes shot wide open and he frighteningly scanned the room. His eyes shrank back to normal when he saw his father standing there next to the open closet door. <sighs> I thought I heard something again, Dad, Oliver whimpered as he rubbed a bit of sleep from his eye. Every part of Louis wanted to say, Yeah, me too. I thought I heard something in the closet, and that's why I'm back in your room, kiddo. You might be right about that monster after all. Instead, he smiled down and whispered to his son, Shh, everything's fine, little man. It's just me. Go back to sleep. Before Oliver could say okay, Dad, a loud, toppling crash came from the back corner of the closet. Both of their heads jerked in the direction of the sound. There was nothing but black inside the closet frame. With his heart fluttering in his chest, Louis smirked at Oliver and said, <laughs> Sounded like a toy avalanche, but was cut short. A large, wet, pale green tentacle slithered out from a pile of clothes and toys and wrapped itself around Louis's ankle. As it crept up towards his thigh, he screamed out and grabbed the post of his son's bed to brace against the pulling. Oliver cried out for his father. The screams became white noise in his head as he lost all control and started flailing his free arm and kicking in fear. Amidst the unknown terror, another mutilated tentacle, with swollen, gluttonous mouths lined with rows of serrated fangs, jutted from the dark space beyond the door. It wrapped around Louis's neck, and the gelatinous nub at the tip forced its way into his mouth. The tentacle kept sliding down his throat, tearing the skin around his mouth splitting his face along his jaw, silencing the screams. Oliver pleaded, No! Daddy! No! over and over again, as he backed into the corner where his bed met the wall. He pulled the sheets over his head and cried and prayed for morning or help. He did not know. The white knuckle grip Louis had on the bedpost was weakening, as he started to lose consciousness. Indifferent to their need, two more leech-like tentacles emerged from the seemingly endless black that was the closet. Oliver wet himself at the sound of his father gagging through thick mud for air that wasn't there. Paralyzed by fear, he didn't move. The tiny shark mouths that lined this squid arm from hell were eating into Louis's flesh with every second. One arm joined the other and completely wrapped around Louis's head. 
They started to tighten like a boa constrictor going in for the kill. Louis' will to hold on was being eaten away bit by bit. The pain was beyond compare, beyond imagination. Finger after finger slipped free from its hold as Louis lost consciousness. The nightmare made real, Louis' limp, lifeless body was torn into sections as the tentacles ripped him back into the void. Gobbets of flesh and blood splattered the walls and sheets of the bed. Oliver felt the wet droplets from under the sheets. The rain of blood was followed by waves of stagnant air wafting out of the open closet door. Otherworldly screams and cries seeping out of the abyss, were being drowned out by a vacuum-like sucking. Oliver waited for what seemed like an eternity for the noises to stop. They slowly died away, and Oliver still waited to look out from under the covers. After only hearing his thumping heartbeat and own labored breathing for some time, he swallowed the lump in his throat and peered over the sheet towards the looming closet. The dark black square hole against the white, blood-drenched wall made it appear like a tunnel to other worlds. Gazing into this hellhole that just erased his father from existence, he noticed clumps of skin and gore dripping down the walls around the closet door. In the nightlight glow, the red blood looked like black, thick like tar. The image made real, the unreality of what he'd just witnessed. With fresh tears welling up in his eyes, Oliver threw off the covers and jumped from his bed. Running out of his bedroom into the dark hallway of the sleeping house, Oliver started screaming for his mother. So I hope you liked that one. Uh, last week's video was all about how you should listen to your parents. Well, this one, I guess, was how you should listen to your kids, wasn't it? <laughs> all right. Um, kind of uh, standard scene, standard setup, but uh, taken into an in interesting direction. But the father never saw that coming, eh? All right. I'll be back again with you on Wednesday. Hope you'll all join me again. For now, bye-bye.